Hey, for those of you who don't know me, I'll give you a really quick bio. So I'm, uh, uh, I'm married. I've been married for 32 and a half years now to my lovely wife, Denise. We have three children. They're grown. Our two oldest daughters live in Auckland. Our youngest son lives at home. It's his birthday today. He, so I chose to be here rather than celebrate his birthday with him. But he, he's... Uh, he, he really wants to be at church this morning because we have this tradition of uh, on Sundays, if it's been your birthday during the week, you get a crunchy. And it only happens once every seven years that your birthday is actually on the Sunday and it sort of get that extra recognition. So um, that was his favorite thing for doing for his birthday. The, uh, I'm a business owner, so I have a business. We, my brother and I own it. We started in 1987. It's in what we do. We're the largest in the South Island, which is... You know, in recent years, you know, we, we've had a lot of turbulence. We've been uh, nearly broke on a number of occasions over that time. But in recent years, by really hearing God speak, you know, the business has taken off. It's been awesome. Uh, uh, what else do I do? So I'd go to church, which is a good thing when you're coming up to speak. I've been, as, as was said, at St. Albans Baptist, and I've you know, privileged to be part of John and Sandra Alps, Alps Church. I've been an elder there now for 18 years. And... Uh, have, during the time I've been there, I've probably served in almost every aspect of the church in some way or le- led there in some way. But uh, certainly for the last 18 years, the primary role has been as an elder, and I just count it a real privilege. And I count it a real honor to be invited to come and share with you today. One of the things, uh, I, I brought some resource with me. So I don't know when books started calling it, being called resource. But it, it seems that when speakers get up, they say, well, we've got some resource to give it. This is um, a book that I wrote last year about, uh, it's just a tool to, to help people hear God speak to them on a, on a regular and frequent basis. And it's, it's got a little bit of my story in there, but it's not really about me. It's got some great theology in it, but it's not a theological book. It's, it's just really a, a, a tool that is a book that about a tool that it just designs you to Help hear God speak, and it's full of lots of little exercises. So it's a really practical book. You can use it as a devotional for a while. And and look, um, I, I, I get humbled by some of the feedback I've get uh, I get from people who have actually used the book and used the tool. And I'd like to give a copy away. And as I was uh, praying about that this week, I felt that there's a a young lady here, 25 years old, who's who's felt that they've had a real call on their life, but doors haven't been opening. Does that resonate with anyone here? Is anyone who can put their hand up? And well, there's a hand up there, but he's probably a bit young. <laughs> Is anyone who really resonates with that? Uh, that they've got a call on their life that, that God, the doors just haven't been opening for them. Well, that's okay. I'll, I'll leave that there. If that does resonate with you later, we might give it to you. The, uh, we, we were up at... Um, Auckland as a group speaking to church a couple of weeks ago and um, I said Look, I've got a word for a guy by the name of Mark is there any Marks here and no one put their hand up and uh, and later at, at the end of the service as we were ministering a, a guy came forward and says I know who that Mark was he was going to be here today he decided not to come and I, and I had a word about a healing thing too and, and I knew it was for him because as you shared the word on healing I, I had that problem and the pain went away straight away so that night, Mark rang me for the word that I, that I had for him. So may, maybe there's someone here who is feeling that way, and we'll, we'll talk about that later on. Okay, so let's get on to, the, to what I want to share with you today. I need a clicker, don't I? Sorry. Okay, this morning I want to share some of the important principles I've learned that have kept me on my journey towards destiny in God. You know, we all have a destiny. We are all designed for purpose. We're all in God's thoughts before the foundation of the world. We are created, designed, and placed in this time and in this space because of God's incredible purpose for each one of us. You know, you are not an accident. You are meant to be here. Whatever stage of life you're in now, whatever you're going, whatever you're doing, whatever, whatever your dreams are, God has a purpose for you. A purpose that is much better than you can possibly 
imagine. Let's see if I can. Which way do we go? Hang on. Look at that. Technology. Now you'll, you'll know this verse from Jeremiah which says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Every one of us has a destiny in Jesus that is better than we can possibly imagine. Yeah. And in Ephesians it says, Now to whom is able to do immediately more than we ask or imagine, God, according to his power that is at work within us. Do you like the picture? Do you know, anyone know where that is? <laughs> I, one of the things I enjoy doing is mountain biking. That's the top of the old ghost road. And it's where I got the inspiration for the title for my, for my book. Okay, so if you're in Christ, then the same power that raised Jesus from the dead is doing so much more in you and through you than, that, than you can possibly imagine, empowering you to pursue purpose. And if you're here this morning and not yet a Christ follower, why not? You're missing out on the best that God has for you. Listen to what the Apostle Paul says. Sorry? So Paul said, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So Romans t Paul tells us in Romans that we fall short. But short of what? You know, we've fallen short of the glory that God has for us. Fallen short of the best that God has for us. Fallen short of the purpose and plan that God has for us. Of the goal that he has set for us. And this is one of the definitions of sin is that we actually fall short of the best that God has for us. God's destiny is the best future we could ever hope or dream for. Yet when we're not in Christ, we choose to try and make our own destiny. How sad is that? However, when we put Jesus in charge again, then he will propel us towards his destiny for us. And I think most of us understand that we have a destiny in Jesus, and that he has a reason for us and a purpose for us. And today's talk isn't so much about the fact that we have a destiny, it's about the journey that we take to reach our destiny. One of the first times I believed I encountered God occurred before I became a Christian. It was when I was at uh, primary school, and I was... In the playground, I was probably about nine. I can re remember exactly where it was. I can't quite remember exactly the age. But uh, about nine, and I felt a voice say to me, one day you're going to be a minister for me. And I looked around to see who was speaking. And the, there was no one there. And since becoming a Christian, I believe that was actually God speaking to me about my future and my destiny. And, you know, that memory has always been me, and I've always taken that as a promise from God, that is saying that, you know, I'm going to minister for him. And 40 years on from that experience, or maybe a little bit over 40 years on from that experience, <laughs> you, know, I, you know, I had that call there. Today, you know, I, I help lead at St. Albans Baptist. I, I'm, uh, a couple of weeks ago, we were up at Papakura Baptist sharing and ministering. This weekend I've been here ministering. It, it, you know, I've, I've written a book which has been helpful to people. I think that today I would say that I am ministering. Yeah. 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 Yet it doesn't look anything like what I thought it was going to look way back here. And, and, I'd have, and I don't think, you know, and where the end is excites me. You know, I still believe that God has got so much more for me out there in the future that I'm still walking into. But there is a gap between the, between the two points, and there is a journey that take place, takes place to get there. 
And I don't think you have to be alive for very long before you realise that sometimes that journey is pretty hard. Anyone think the journey is easy? Uh, there are always challenges. In fact, I think that sometimes we just go from one challenge ready for the next challenge, ready for the next challenge. And it's the way life is, isn't it? This morning I would like us to look at a few of the many things that I've learned on my journey from here to there. And pray that you might find my experience helpful in your journey. So you ready? The first thing I want to talk about is that there is, there is foundation before future. Foundation before future. Who you are is actually more important than where you're going. Who you are is more important than where you're going. You know, we're often more concerned about where we're going rather than who we are. In the past years, we've run many conferences as a church, and if you put a workshop in there about how to know God's will for your life, it often was the most populated workshop. People just seem to want to, to get that heads up on where they're going. But actually, who you are is far more important. Romans 12.2 is one of my go-to verses for the last year or so. And it says, Do not be conformed any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. And this verse is telling us that destiny is God's good, pleasing, and perfect will for each one of us. But the Apostle Paul says the way to discover God's good, pleasing, and perfect will is to renew our minds. Not to be so worried about our direction. And renewing our minds means changing our beliefs from the world's belief systems into kingdom belief systems. And this principle is key for moving forward into our future. Listen to this thought. It is incredibly important to believe in Jesus to go from earth to heaven. You got that? It's also incredibly important to believe like Jesus to bring heaven to earth. Do you want me to say that again or you got that? It's, impre it's incredibly important to believe in Jesus to go from earth to heaven. It's incredibly important also to believe like Jesus to bring heaven to earth. And we all have beliefs that need to shift and be renewed. Beliefs that if we, they remain unchanged will limit our future and hold us back. Now, For me, one of the things that I need for achieving my future is a great relationship with my wife. If you're married, say amen. amen. Or if you're a guy and married, say amen. Now, God partnered me with Denise, therefore it makes sense that our paths and destiny are intertwined. Now, there was a period of time not too long ago that I'd come home from work and most evenings I'd come home and I'd criticise Denise. How, how many wives say, realise that when her husband's doing that, it's not a good thing? You know, it was actually... Sh it was actually causing our relationship to shut down. And there, there are reasons why I was doing it, but that's not the point. The fact is I was coming home, I was criticising Denise, and that was actually shutting our relationship down. One time I was, uh, at night, I was uh, spending some time with Jesus, and in my imagination I was there with Jesus on a, on a, on a sort of a grassy place, and Jesus, Jesus said to me, I want to wash your feet. And so in my imagination, it, sat down, Jesus got a bowl of water, he, he washed my feet, he dried them, and he said to me, do you know why I did that? And I said, well, God, I, I remember the story in the Bible. I can't remember the exact reason that you did it. And Jesus said, 
If I, your Lord, am washing the muck off your feet for each day, what right do you have to do you have to judge others for what's happened in their day? And I knew that God was speaking to me about the way that I was criticizing Denise. And because of that word of God, I haven't done that again since. I've never come home from work and criticized Denise about any anything. And the other thing that changed is I started extravagantly appreciating anything that she did. So she'd, she'd do washing, she'd fold it, she'd put it on the bed, and I'd say, Denise, I'm just so appreciative that you've done that washing just for me, and you've put it there, and it's, I really thank you for that. Or she'd go grocery, grocery shopping. Denise, thank you so much. Look, you've got the bread that I like. I, I just really appreciate you doing that. And, and it was just really over-the-top, extravagant appreciation for what she's doing. And she'd laugh <laughs> and enjoy it. And then she caught on. And she started doing it. And we still do it today. And it is one of the best things for our marriage in a long time. And it's fun. And that is the power of God actually speaking to us about our identity, about who we are, about changing some of our belief systems, about changing some of our thought processes to actually bring a difference and help us walk onto our journey. If we're going to reach our destiny, then we need to behave better. And we don't behave better by trying harder or creating more rules. That's old thinking. The way to achieve better behavior is to establish better beliefs. And the way we establish better beliefs is by renewing our minds. And I don't know if we will ever get to the end of renewing our minds, about shifting our beliefs until we actually get get to heaven. As I was preparing for this talk, one of the things I did is as I started listing down all the um, blessings that, that God has given me in recent times, as, as we should do on a, on a regular basis. And, and one of the things I wrote down there is I haven't had a cold or flu in the last two years. And uh, I have had cold symptoms. And uh, I encourage people, any, anyone I'm talking to, and they say, oh, I've got a cold at the moment. I say, don't say that. Say that you're fighting cold symptoms. Don't own the cold. And when, when, whenever I've started having cold symptoms, I just start declaring, Jesus, you've promised me that I'm walking into uh, increasing health every day. And, and I just uh, t- uh, take hold of these cold symptoms and I command them to go in Jesus' name. And, th- and they've been going. So I was writing down this as a, one of the benefits and blessings that God has given me. And I, and I started thinking, I wonder how long this is going to last. And you get the thought behind that, the belief behind that is, is God good enough to keep something going on and on? Or is it just something that he does for a, for a short period of time? Can I trust him for the future? And I thought, God, I thought I dealt with that. And I had at some level, but it just showed that there's still beliefs that need to be changed. So I had to actually go to God and, it, and, and have a bit of a chat around that, that um, belief system that I had. Can you relate to what I'm saying? Our existing wrong beliefs need to be pulled down and replaced. To know what beliefs need working on, we need revelation from Jesus. And I think the uh, first four verses in the Bible provide a great metaphor to help us understand how that can work. So... Let me just use this as a metaphor to explain to you. In the beginning, God created. In the beginning, God thought about you. In the beginning, God planned for you. He had a, he thought about, we've talked about it. He's got the destiny for you. He planned for you right now to be here, to hear this message. He had wonderful thoughts about you. He's got a hope and a future for you. We've talked about it. In the beginning, God thought about you. But then verse 2 says, Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep. And um, other translations say that there was chaos there. In our minds, we have things which are dark, 
We have thoughts which are dark. We have beliefs which are wrong. We have uh, some chaos in our, in our thought patterns. Around our world, that can be a, a world situation. We can have chaos going on. We can have situations which are just out of control. The really cool thing about this verse is it says, the Spirit of God was hovering. The Spirit of God was hovering. Whatever is going on, whatever situation is in your life, whatever it is, beliefs that need to be renewed, the Spirit of God is hovering there, waiting to act. The Spirit of God is there, waiting to act. Waiting for what? Waiting for a word. Look at the next verse. It says, And God said, And God said, And God said, A word from God changes everything. A word from God activates. A word from God releases. A word of God brings light into darkness and shifts situations. Spirit of God is hovering. Word from God, action, light overcomes darkness. And God said it's good. So whatever situation you're in at the moment, if you've got wrong beliefs, the Spirit of God is hovering there, waiting to act. As soon as you receive a word from God, the key is to actually go after God. As our beliefs change, our behavior changes, and we move towards our de destiny, we can trust God for our direction if we focus on renewing our mind. Our character is more important than our course. Our foundation sets up our future. Understanding our, our identity in Christ enables action. Who we are is more important than what we do. What we do flows out of who we are. Okay, the next, next thing that I've learned is just make a decision. You know, all through life, we need to make decisions. Whenever we say yes to one thing, we're also saying no to something else. If we say yes to ice cream, I say that too often, we're saying no to weight loss. If we say yes to staying up really late, we're saying no to good sleep patterns. If we say no to immediate gratification, we're saying yes to something better in the future. Every day we make a lot of decisions or choices. So if we have a destiny which, we, which we've said we have, what happens to our future if we make a bad decision? Or what happens if another person or a circumstance stops us from taking the direction we think we should go? Is that a fair question? Yeah. You know, I do believe... We should do our research and seek counsel when making decisions. So I'm not saying don't do that. Just hear me with that. It's, it's, scripture says a lot about, about getting good counsel. The thing is, sometimes we can be so afraid of making a bad decision that we won't make any. Or we can be so focused on the future, we stop doing things in the present. Now, I meet some people like that, they're, they're that worried about what's going to happen in the future, they hardly do anything now. Consider this, here's another little thought for you to, to take on board. God will do more with a bad decision made in faith than he will with a good decision made without faith. God will do more with a bad decision made in faith than he will with a good decision made without faith. We can trust Jesus to work things out. Our role is to make the best faith-based decisions we can when decisions need to be made. Sometimes you just need to make a decision. There's a couple of well-known verses uh, here And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. 
And because God's plans for your life are so much bigger and better than you can hope or imagine, get that, his plans for you are so much bigger and better than you can hope or imagine, it makes sense that we won't understand the best way of getting to our destiny all of the time. His way of getting us to our future is going to be different to what we would always choose. God can take our bad decisions and bad circumstances and make it work when we have put our faith in Jesus. He can be trusted to work it out. So you remember the word I received you know, before I was a Christian, about nine years old, primary school, that one day you're going to be a minister. Thirteen years old, I, I become a Christ follower, I accept Jesus, and I thought, okay, I'm really passionate for God, I'm going to go after him, and, and uh, I get to... Uh, Finished, towards finishing the sixth form at high school, uh, um, year 12, I think it is these days, at high school, and, and thinking about what am I going to do for my future. And, and I felt really passionately, I wanted to, I went up to my pastor and I said, look, what I want to do is I'll work part-time and I want to come and serve at the church and, and be mentored by you in becoming a, a minister and then maybe go into Bible college. And we didn't have things called interns back then. And... Uh, then I went home and talked with mum and dad and said, you know, this is what I'm thinking I, I want to do. And mum and dad said, uh, we don't think that's a good idea. We think you should go get a trade. Then you'll always have something to fall back on if ministry doesn't work out. My father wasn't actually a Christian at that stage. And so here's this dilemma. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, you know, God, you've called me. I need to go and, and follow that call and go after ministry. Mum and dad are saying, no, don't do that. What do I do? So I realized that the Bible said, honor your father and mother if you want to live long on the, on the earth, if you want to have a great future. So I said, okay, well, God, your word says that, so I will do what mum and dad say. And I went and got an apprenticeship at the railway's workshop. And, and followed down that path and it completely shifted the direction decision was made in faith though based on God's word and so where I am now this, this part I'm fulfilling the call of God in my life I am ministering and I won't say I wouldn't change anything because there's some stuff that I've done over my life journey that perhaps I could have done better but I have loved my life I love where I am now and I love where God's taking me and I was a, I've shown that I can trust God to sort things out yeah. you know it is easy for people to become paralyzed and not make decisions because they're afraid of making the wrong choice but the opposite is true. By making a decision and getting on with it, you're actually giving God something to work with. You're giving God something to work with. Once you've researched what you can, sought counsel and talked to God, please just make a decision. Ding, ding, ding already. Good grief. Okay. We'll go really quick. Okay, you're more. What's happened here? I'm trying to go back. Okay, you're more powerful than you think. So just really quickly on this. So that that's a hundred e prefect. That was my very first car. The guy on it was my best friend at high school. He went and played for the Mary All Blacks. Um, you know, it, others don't determine our outcomes. We do. It is easy to allow other people to railroad us from the hope we have for our future. People, organisations, the church will disappoint us. They will let us down. They will say or do wrong things. When we experience these things, it's easy to shift focus and become discouraged. 
The Bible tells us to be um, completely humble, gentle, and patient. Bearing with one another means that we realize that stuff is just going to happen. People, organizations, and things are going to hurt us. Just get over it. Uh, I purchased my first car at the age of 15, the 100 e Prefect you saw. And after a while, the diff started getting really noisy. It needed to be replaced. And one of the assistant or uh, part-time pastors at the church I was going to had a, owned a wrecking yard. He had a diff that I needed. I went there, bought it, and I felt God say, look, give him an extra $20 when you pay for the diff. Now, 15-year-old, back a long time ago, $20 was a lot of money. It really was. So I did it. A few weeks later, it might have been a few months later, it seemed really close, he was actually... Uh, stood down and told to leave the church because of some ratbag thing he was, he was doing. And I had this real strong debate with God about it that um, you, you told me to give him an extra $20 and he's a ratbag. Why would that happen? And, and uh, God said to me, you know, his issues are for him to talk to me about. The issues that I'm talking to you about is your generosity and your attitude to money. And the stuff that I'm dealing with you with, I'll deal with you with. And the stuff that I'm dealing with him with, I'll deal with him with. Get over it. <laughs> okay, we'll, we'll, move, we'll move quickly on. <laughs> Serving opens doors. There are so many powerful verses in the Bible, and one of them is this. Sitting down, Jesus called the twelve and said, If anyone wants to be first, he must be the very last and servant of all. And if there's one thing you need, I want you to take away from today about actually walking to your destiny, is the power of serving. It is the power of serving. If you want to go to your destiny, if you want to move on into your future, if you want to actually be great in the kingdom, if you want to move into leadership, if you want to grow and expand into everything that God has to you, Jesus gave the key. He said, Serve serve. Wherever you go, serve. When Adele rang me about uh, coming up here to do things uh, on the Saturday, I said, look, if all, if all I end up doing is helping out in the kitchen, we didn't have food, so I didn't really need to do it. I'm happy to do that because I'm passionate about the kingdom and I'll do anything to see it grow. And because I have spent my life serving where I can, then doors have opened. And he, here's the key thing about serving is as someone who serves can be trusted. Right. Someone who serves can be trusted. And then they will, are given opportunities and they grow. And, and the reason that I get opportunities today is because I've spent my life with a heart that wants to serve. And if you want to move into your destiny, that is one of the key ingredients Jesus said is serve. Serve. And I encourage you, it doesn't matter what happens uh, around you in the church, the circumstances, uh, have a heart of service. Our church 25 years ago went through a church split. A lot of people left. It was really messy. It was a horrible situation. And, and I remember just saying to God, Lord, whatever it takes, whatever it takes to see SABC come into a place of health, I'm up for it. Just use me. I'll serve wherever I can. And I served in lots and lots of ways. And then because of that attitude, invited on to eldership and being able to serve continually. Time is coming to a close. I've really abbreviated those last points quite. Just want to finish. I'm going to invite uh, Greg and Ian to come up as well. You know, the last point is if we're going to go after our destiny, we need to be spirit empowered. And rather than talking about that, I think it's better if we demonstrate it and we empower people. Does that sound good? So the band wants to come up as well.